My name is Josh Sharp. For the longest time, I've pretty much been the son of Roger Sharp, which has kind of explained enough over the last, you know, I'm 32, turned 32 yesterday. So, the last 10 years or so, I've taken more responsibility on myself in competing in pinball tournaments, doing promotion, starting the International Pinball Association, working with you guys in uh, helping, you know, a video pinball product come to life helping, you know, with pinball designers and giving feedback of, you know, when I get a chance to go in and play the games. Pretty much, the son of Roger would be my game title. A lot of the things that he did in the 70s and the 80s, I've been able to do with my brother the last, you know, 10, 15 years since we've been starting to drive ourselves around versus needing a ride. So at least from where, where I came into it, I know that you guys have come out with a Gottlieb product Boom, that I have not seen and had approached Williams and getting anything pinball related out of that company now usually funnels through to my dad's desk as he's the only pinball guy at Williams and I know that after he saw, and I don't know if you guys had submitted like first passes of games as what you guys thought would be good to go or just talking with them about what to do but I remember him calling me and asked, asking if I'd be interested because of my knowledge just of competing and, and you know, seeing games early and often and playing a lot and being able to lend a hand to you guys to try to, you know, make the world's finest simulation of what an actual table plays like. So the approval process when the original Williams Pinball Hall of Fame was done back in 05 or whatever it was, I would get sent a development system that I would not know how to hook up. So you guys would go through helping me hook it up because I can't, I can't use a keyboard or a mouse to save my life. But uh, you would send a build. I would review that build and at least initially the games were not ROM emulated. So there was a challenge in knowing that the game rules were being recreated and I know that I'm sure my dad's hesitancy and mine was pinball design is so intricate it is nearly impossible to recreate everything that's going on at a particular moment in a game depending on especially as you get to the newer games as I'm sure you guys have seen as your uh, tables have gone from jive time up to you know newer stuff you know hitting hitting the shot causes things to happen based on 11 different variables that are going on at any given time. And to be able to track all of those manually going one by one and saying, I think the game did that. This light was on, this light wasn't, it, it had this speech call. Trying to manually put that together, I think uh, it made it a lot more challenging, you know, the first time I went through it with you guys versus now that you're uh, using the ROM emulation, especially on the, the dot matrix games, which I think I may have told you guys I was not interested in helping if you were not using ROM emulation for the uh, Dot Matrix games, because it's just to recreate all that art. I had, uh, and even funny enough, before Ultra Pin, there was the, you guys may know, the Pinball, Williams Pinball Classics for the PC. My dad was involved in the table approval process then, and Zach and I were much younger then, but we would go through and play those. and. It'd be interesting to not hear the speech call, but to hear someone's version of that same speech call pulled up. And it's like, does anyone else think this is absolutely awful? Because, you know, instead of it's like, jackpot, it's some, you know, guy that's like, jackpot. <laughs> and it, you, you, it can't be the same. And for someone like me and for people that I think that'll, you know, there's going to be two, two different kinds of people that play your product. And that's people that have, you know, never played pinball or have never played that table. And then there's going to be people that are extremely familiar about the product, but they don't have $3,000 to buy the real thing. And this is a form of entertainment that sort of scratches that itch, is the way that I like to look at it. And, you know, things like those speech calls, things like dot matrix animations being mostly correct back then and looking at, at those PC games. I mean, it was a, a riot. It was a laugh fest to, to see what they would draw up and if they just didn't feel like doing an animation, they would just sort of skip it and move on to the, to the things that they felt important. So I think now as you guys are starting to pound out, you know, table after table, I'm sure it's uh, it's easier on you guys as well, being able to work, I guess, within the lines of a, a given foundation for, you know, using actual game code and then 
trying to tweak games more physically and not worrying about how much is that shot worth if I have three of these modes running but one just timed out but there's two more that are still running. With the emulation I could almost, you know, it'd probably be worthwhile for me to, ha to use a button to trigger open the coin door, go into switch test and like, you know, press my button and, and see what's not coming up because it, you guys are, it is a virtual version of a real machine versus a simulation of what a machine plays like. I guess, I mean, those two statements sound kind of similar, but, you know, I consider this your guys' next generation of virtual pinball, and to me, it's a virtual representation of the actual machine versus trying to simulate the game as best as possible. Yeah, put that that's, in yeah, there. That's a good sound. But, you know, my dad and I are extremely close, so, you know, we talk about you guys all the time, especially and especially now that it's been five years plus on this relationship. I think the one thing that him and I, and, you know, when Zach comes over and he plays the build, like, we're excited that you guys are excited about pinball. And it shows in the product. 